over the last year I have I know many people that came back to Bulgaria to Greece mm -hmm. to Romania really many people and I really encourage that because a person can prevail anywhere mm -hmm. as long as he wants now why don't we do the same with trying to work on improving uh, our own nations countries by rebuilding them it depends on it doesn't depend on anyone else not that is insane I've noticed a very specific trend young very intelligent uh, industrious people you know graduating from university and then fleeing their home country without even trying to build anything and then let's say dedicating all of that education all of that skill all of, the, all of that power to another country just like you because you mm. were living in the Netherlands and you came back yeah but you realize that when you started to make things work for yourself digitally when you started to work hard and put your success in your hands not in the country you're in you were able to start building something and become I a agree. happier guy absolutely let's be honest wow bloody good view <laughs> oh amazing bloody wow well, look epic the sun hitting it Wow, wow, okay, if we continue up to the um, Svastnifiski, as you know, Hassan Jamal joined with Marin. And uh, where are we today, mate? We are on top of the Klemetu mountain pass, mm -hmm. and this is the monument of freedom. The monument, an old Soviet monument, right? Uh, yes, that's right. Monument of freedom, <laughs> and we are pretty high up. Um, what is it, 2,000 meters up? <laughs> Approximately, but not not that much. Mm -hmm. One thousand seven eight hundred. Wow. Not sure, but it's a very high mountain pass. Incredible. And to my knowledge, it is the highest in the Balkans. Wow. The highest, one of the highest mountain passes in the Balkans, if not the highest. Merlin confirmed. <laughs> the historian. Look at this view, guys. And the air here. The air here is truly immense. You can see. A lot of animal matter, shall we say, because yeah. um, there are a lot of wild horses, uh, cows, maybe, maybe wolves. Who knows? <laughs> oh, probably. probably somewhere. Oh, but, yeah, holy sh! What, dude? What is this? It's huge. So, why was this built? Was it just like built during the Soviet times to? Yes, it was. Just like. Uh... What? One of the Soviet monuments. Yeah. It was a pretty good piece of propaganda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously there's a very controversial relationship with Soviet times. Some Bulgarians uh, look back fondly, especially some of the older generation, when things were a lot, let's say, more stable. That's right. Not as chaotic as mafia, who obviously were not in charge of the country. Whereas um, for the younger generation, some people are. I don't know. Look, 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 look at this period of time with disdain. But either way, one thing we can say, all politics aside, I don't want to be political, that this is a truly incredible piece of architecture. And you can only imagine how difficult it would be to build something of such magnitude uh, on top of a 2,000 metre mountain pass prior Amazing. to a lot of the modern technologies we have. Obviously, they still had you know, basic technologies, but nothing like what we have now, you know, when it comes to building things of scale. Yeah, this, is, this is pretty, pretty large. It's an incredible. Look. I mean, we should go. Go underneath it. Yeah, can you go underneath for scale yes. so I can let the people know? So, so you guys can see just how big this is, because I can't get all of it in the shot. That is insane. That is simply insane, guys. Marin, it, you look like an ant next to it. It's crazy. Wow. Again. Wow. Probably the purpose of this arc is when you stand underneath it, for it to bring so, so, a sort of inspiration, right? For you to oh. be awed by the sheer uh, massiveness and the greatness. Oh. That's why it's the monument of freedom, because as you guys probably saw on the started on the monument itself there was a date written there and that was 8078 which is the liberation date of the modern Bulgarian nation amazing and the view is simply breathtaking Stunning. 
stunning. We'll definitely have to get a, a photo for the gram later, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. So these are um, obviously carved within the rock, various Soviet images. Is that someone hugging? Or. I can't really tell you, to be honest. It's hard but to tell. Can guys probably see these are sort of. You've got a few Soviet soldiers, probably. Mm -hmm. Of course. And some of these uh, carvings mm -hmm. resemble uh, traditional Bulgarian. Yes, I noticed menu. here, yes. As you can see here, um, the hat, which we call Kalpak. Oh, Kalpak. Oh, look at this one. This one's got the, the light is better here. Exactly. Cut with the traditional hat, Kalpak. And you guys probably see there's a very large belt, which is the poyas, mm -hmm. as we call it. And what's the purpose of this belt? Is it a utility belt or just... U utility belt and of course keeping uh, your belly and uh, back warm in the winter. Very important. Oh yes, because somewhere like here they get a lot of snow. You said up to four meters at times? Something uh, our my countrymen and might have noticed or not noticed, and especially, especially a message to the foreigners, People here that live in the mountainous areas, they dress very well, regardless if it's winter, summer. Yeah. Even in the summer, they take a jacket with them because they are so used to the cold weather mm -hmm. and they know that they have to protect their backs, especially from the cold. <sighs> Incredible. And um, you can hear that, the insects, nature, some herbs that you can probably pick over there oh yeah absolutely i have one question i don't know if you guys can see but there is 944 944 well that is of course we come here to the communism propaganda this is when bulgaria fell under communism ah okay yeah. so maybe i can catch this for you however guys it's quite difficult to to it's very up high. yeah it's very high but up there inscribed is, is 1944 obviously um yeah some not soviet so like you said soviet communism uh, pro propaganda, but this this is this is a very special monument. Out of all the monuments I've seen so far, it's one of the most impressive or looming, depending on how you want to view it. Uh, but regardless, a a really uh, a really a treasure, and I'm glad that even if some people now look upon this time, well, this period of Bulgarian history negatively, I'm very uh, happy that it stays and it remains. So people can still, yeah. Oh, here it is. So see the message. Mm -hmm. We were almost correct, but it was altitude 1,630 meters, still very high. Yeah. Uh, and we can see, of course, that the, the monument itself is 34 meters high. That's pretty. And that's was, pretty long. And it was built in memory of those who died for the liberation exactly. of Bulgaria. Which exactly. is, does that mean um, during Soviet times or? No, probably during 1978 and the liberation wars. Oh shit! And so was that information wrong? Uh, no, no, it's uh, the communist. The communist propaganda probably refers to also the Soviet soldiers, that, but in reality, yeah. they didn't. As we know, they didn't really die for Bulgaria. Okay. For Bulgaria. So we're talking about the people that gave their life in the 19th century for the liberation wars. Ah, uh, okay. So, they, but it was still built as part of. Um, yeah. Yeah. Part, yeah. Okay. So I'm just making sure I'm give, we were giving you the right information, guys. And if there, if there are any subscribers who who would like to correct anything we say. Please, please do, you know, we're just... Maybe the guys can probably see there's a, like a sticker of the Balkans, the Balkan nations over there. Oh, let's see, you got, yeah, you've got uh, Bulgaria, Greece, Turkey, Albania. Romania, Macedonia, Serbia. Macedonia, Serbia. Yeah, many, many Romanians died in uh, the liberation wars here. Really? And Serbians and Greeks, yeah, and pretty much wow. people from the entire Balkans have participated. And it's, um, I mean, for me, uh, as, a, as an outsider, I like to see such stickers. I, li I would love to see a United Balkans. I think right now, um, all, ar all around Europe, you know, we're, we have this giant, giant, like to say, EU mentality, but it's not culture specific. And when you, when you look at the Balkans, you look at the people, the soul within these people from this, all the way from the Mediterranean, well, Southern Europe, this Southern European mentality, this Southern European identity, I feel like it's stronger. Then much, um, much stro stronger. stronger and healthier than maybe the the Western or Northern European identity. You know, I don't think a Bulgarian has less in common with an Albanian or a Serbian than he does with you know a, a nor you know a German or a Scandinavian person. Let's be honest, we we haven't got much in common with 
any of the Western countries or Northern mm. countries in Europe. And that's not a, that's not a bad or a good thing. No. It's just an objective truth. So for me, seeing the fact, you know, seeing those stickers, seeing that people do support some form of Balkan identity, I think it's great. As an outsider, remember, I'm an outsider, but I, I really, I, I would long, as someone who now lives here and would like to build a life in the, in this region of the world, I, I really hope one day that the uh, Balkans does manage to unite or at least get over the, the a lot of the, a lot of, let's say, previous history and try and build. Because I think a united Balkan state or at least a united Balkans within people who everyone's not hating on each other or arguing would be a far stronger uh, and be better environment for for the for the future for the for the young children of the future. I mean, uh, would absolutely. you agree? Oh, I, I would. I've always I have I've always thought of that thing since mm. a young age, mm -hmm. and I've always been pro Southern Europe, pro Balkans, let's say, mm -hmm. and I've always said to my hmm, countrymen or not even countrymen, let's say people from the Balkans, you know. I would like United Balkans. Mm -hmm. People are very skeptical because of the <clears throat> intense nationalism. But I think with the newer generations of Balkan people, like the younger generation, such as us, and maybe even younger, they are starting to realize what we have, the treasure we have, the legacy we have, and that the Balkans have more in common uh, and they are more related than anything else mm. in the world. Uh, I'll give an example with myself. I've been to the West. I've been. Uh, I spent almost a year in the Netherlands. If two Balkan people meet, it's immense love. <laughs> it's all. It's mm. if if somebody's here, they're gonna hate on nationalism and oh, give me back this uh, border. I used to have it. It's bullshit, people. It's it's a uh, it's a completely different era right mm -hmm. now. So what we must do is to unite ourselves, ourselves, and improve and build a good, strong home. And that's why I'd like I'd like to see this United Balkans. It doesn't need to be one country. It doesn't need to be a federation. No. It needs to be united. And this is friendly, yeah, because you see on the internet, you see in general, actually, when you speak to people, there's still a lot of animosity between each Balkan state. But I feel like that was that was that's very orchestrated. And yes, there is. There's been a very dark and and and, and devastating history between all of these nations. But now, I think the the cultural similarities it's it's really is a time to 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 unite especially given the current situations around the world and uh yeah look for a, a better future and not to lean or lean towards or, or worship these western nations like even britain i'm as being a british guy but britain and germany and and scandinavia just because they have money that's not everything but to look towards other things you know tr you know troubles and trials and tribulations that have, that have been overcome as you can see here at the Arch of Freedom, um, and yeah, build a better future. You know, exactly. come back, come back. You know, this is what we say constantly, mate. You know, the um, for all the young Bulgarians, for any, I know there's quite a lot of people from Greece, from Albania, from from all sort, all of the Balkan nations who watch these videos. Guys, think about coming back. Think about trying to figure out how you can come back and uh, build a better future for. For everybody, because at the moment this whole region of Europe, it's losing it's losing all of its great minds just for something as as simple as uh, as money. And by doing that, they're also allowing the the bad people to take control. Absolutely. And also, because when you have no young intellectuals and you have no young you know young voters, what happens? You know, evil exactly. evil uh, it prevails. We could evil say evil prevails. They they take control of the situation. Let's say that the current situation in the Balkans is not just uh, the mere consequence of uh, communism and mm -hmm. uh, the times of transition to democracy. Mm -hmm. That's not the only thing that has contributed. It's the mentality itself. And let's put it, uh, let's be honest, it is indeed the mentality that needs to be changed to some degree. But I'm going to spring in some, um, some positiveness you know, mm -hmm. onto my Balkan countrymen because of, of over the last year I have I know many people that came back to Bulgaria to Greece mm -hmm. to Romania really many people and I really encourage that because a person can prevail anywhere mm -hmm. as long as he wants now why don't we do the same with trying to work on improving uh, our own nations countries by rebuilding them it depends on it doesn't depend on anyone else not the old mm. people not the middle-aged people it's the young people 
But people probably know what's going on in Bulgaria now. There's lots of protests, clashes with the police. Oh, yeah, Oof. people are rioting. <laughs> and uh, in my opinion, people are, are in their rights to riot and they should riot because... Or well, protest, not riot. Riot is oh, like... Yeah, protest. Rioting is when you like destroy... A, you're destroying yeah, your neighborhood. Yeah. No, we but don't want to become the USA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're talking about protesting and um, people need to protest because they've had, they've had enough of... They've had enough of mafia and corruption. So... Bulgaria is not a, it's not a, it's not a poor country. Greece is not a poor, no, Romania is not a poor country. The Balkans are not poor at all. They're just being, their richness is being taken by a few mm. people and it's being exported to the West as well. Let's, yeah. let's be honest. That's the truth. Yeah, people uh, well, know it. The educate the talent. The, 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 I'm not saying don't go to the West and get an education. Don't go to the West and learn skills. But what's happening now, and this is a problem not just in the Balkans. It's also an issue all around Southern Europe and the rest of the world. Because as a, as a teacher. And an online teacher, I, I, I speak to people from Russia, from China, from Japan, from but especially other countries like, let's say, Vietnam. I have students from Vietnam. I have students from all around the Balkans and er everywhere, everywhere, yeah? What I've noticed a very specific trend. Young, very intelligent, uh, industrious people, you know, graduating from university and then fleeing their home country without even trying to build anything and then let's say, dedicating all of that education, all of that skill, all of, the, all of that power to another country that doesn't actually... They don't even do that. I'm just going to quickly intersect mm -hmm. here. Sorry yeah. for interrupting. Yeah, please do. People, highly intelligent, educated people, go to the West mm -hmm. and they completely dump their knowledge in the trash because they work mediocre jobs. A lot of the time. Just yeah. to get in mm. the society. And they struggle. And they get so used to the struggle that they forget what is being a soulful. They forget the life... Mm -hmm. that they used to have here because what i've always um stated is that people here in general might have less money than the people in the west mm -hmm. but i still think they live better yeah, oh, that, dude, is my, dude, that is my dude, opinion i i've told you i yeah. said you know i've lived in the uk i've lived here had money lost money not you know been normal average now like i am and <laughs> it's not the key to happiness guys M money and chasing the bag chasing money it's not going to make you happy or no. fulfilled. You can go to, like I, I did, you can be in England, you can work the job, you can make some money, but guess what? There's nothing else. That's all there is. You go to work, you live in London, you commute, you go to work, you go home, you put Netflix on, you eat what, shit food, yeah. and you die yeah, that's, slowly. That's your life. That's yeah. your life. Whereas, you know, here, in the Balkans especially, you have a deep, soulful connection with nature. And I think that's why I... I've really I have fallen in love with this part of the world um, because I just I didn't identify with the, the the Western European grind, you know, of just going to the office, being a slave. And even if it means that I would uh, sacrifice some career progression, just like you, because you mm. were living in the Netherlands and you came back. Yeah. But you realize that when you started to make things work for yourself digitally, when you started to work hard and put your success in your hands, not in the country you're in you were able to start building something and become I a happier agree. guy. Absolutely, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I have earned w much more money, saved much more money here in, in uh, the time frame of just a few months than for one year in the Netherlands. And that's a message to all, all my uh, countrymen that go abroad and think that they're going to uh, become rich. It's not going to work, guys. No, It doesn't work that way. You're, you're also, let's not forget, you're a foreigner. And you're also a foreigner with bad reputation when you go yeah. to the West because... Yeah, we, we all know why. Yeah. Well, your foreign experience is different to my foreign experience yeah. because we can, you know, it might sound sound hypocritical for me to say, "Hey, come back to your country, ah, oh, don't be a foreigner." But uh, I think uh, for a lot of the the uh, the Balkan or even Eastern European and or Southern European, because this is Southern Europe, uh, people who go to the West, they have a very different experience than what probably what I had coming to Bulgaria because when I came to Bulgaria I had a you know online business I mm. had I, I was in a very uh, privileged I would say privileged off my own hard work but privileged position in society mm -hmm. but the young kids now leaving this wonderful country going to the west going to northern Europe going to America they're not in that privileged position no, not at all. and instead, you, instead of, you know when I came to here, here I was automatically in a upper middle class situation because of my hard work that I do for my own job but the young kids now, you intelligent young people watching this from Bulgaria, from Romania, from the Balkans, from Eastern Europe, 
when you go to Britain, when you go to America, you will not be greeted with, you know, uh, you know, uh, let's say open arms and a lot, a lot of the time open arms or love. And instead, you will have to start from the, you know, the bottom and grind up. Why not just start from the bottom and grind up here? And then in addition mm. to that, you know, you can build something and the, the, the requirements to build something and be successful here are a lot absolutely, lower. Absolutely. Like if you can make, you know, 2,000, you know, 1,000, it can be difficult, but over the course of five, six years, if you can make 1,000, 2,000 euros, whatever, you know, just a standard British salary here, guys, you young Bulgarians, you talented young people, you can... You can have such a better life. You know, you can be in London and you can work like a slave and pay 800 euros for rent and never be able to buy a property. Or if you can try and utilize digital skills or create international clients in any area, yeah, or create something for the Bulgarian market, even with 1,000 lever or 1,500 lever outside of Sofia, you can live a much better better life 1500 level it's, it's not a small salary no it's not a small it's, salary it's a very good salary let's do a, i'm gonna do a quick comparison now you should never uh, uh, uh turn uh one currency to another currency because that's false yeah uh you, let's not forget tax standards of living and etc but if you live with let's say um let's say that a thousand left or 1200 left here mm -hmm. is an equivalent to, from personal experience, to three, four thousand euros in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. So imagine the massive difference. With one, with twelve hundred left here, you can live as good as with three, four thousand euros in the Netherlands. Yeah, and that is because of many reasons, and that's because of many. But if you utilize your funds well enough, you can live better. And Fish. I can personally say that from my own experience. And mm. people should believe me. Many people that were my friends. Mm -hmm. from all, the, all over the Balkans and the Netherlands, they, they know it as well. And that's one of the reasons why they all came back. Mm -hmm. um, so also, let's face it, uh, in the West, the mentality is completely different. Uh, for example, Americans, they don't know the difference between Europeans. But if we have to be honest, the, the, the difference between Eastern and Western Europe in general is so massive that there's, there's not even they're not they're not, they're even not common the same points. thing dude they're, they're not, not the same, same thing, thing. yeah no. it's a completely different entity and when you inspect eastern europe then southern europe is also mm -hmm. a very different entity oh for sure so there you go there you go guys so we kind of um we we, we switched up the uh, soviet monument with some red pilling a very um <laughs> an interesting environment for such a, a, a powerful little chat we don't plan this like i said we we just had an idea to make a two so minute improvised. we wanted to make a two minute video just showing you guys mm. this before we go to the uh, the tet event and we'll, we'll talk yep. about that later event, yep. but the you know you know the the love for this region and uh, our, our love for just chatting shit and, and pretending we're philosophers <laughs> always <laughs> takes over <laughs> so um one more question before we finish 1878 what does that mean the liberation of Bulgaria. That's the liberation yeah, of Bulgaria. As I mentioned is that the liberation day tomorrow? Or is that a different day? No, no. Tomorrow is the day of independence. Okay. Official independence. What day, what, what's that date for people know? 22nd of September. 22nd of liberation day. Yeah. Happy liberation day. Di happy liberation day, guys. Um, so that's it from us. Um, Marin is going to make, I'm going to force Marin to make a YouTube channel. So go and follow his YouTube channel. There will be many links in description in the comments. Go follow that. Because he's going to make some really cool stuff in the future. We're not sure what. But, you know, you know, this, char much. this charismatic, young, Barry White sounding ass motherfucker <laughs> will make some good shit. So uh, why I, I, what I can only say is that I don't like scripting either. So, yeah, guys, there you it's going to be it's going to be all natural. Whatever all organic, comes. Man. No, no fake shit. No influencer. No. no buy my tea. None of that crap. Yeah. Guys, we're just bringing you the Balkans and Bulgaria in its rawest form. OK, absolutely. So there we are from the Arch of Freedom. Arkana Svabata. No, Svobodata. Svobodata. That's a yeah. hard one to say. <laughs> um, have a wonderful day, guys. And yeah, remember if you like it, like it. You can subscribe if you want. Um, share it with your friends. People who need to hear this. Maybe you've got some cousins, friends, family abroad who just need to be reminded about how powerful, how powerful this place is. Um, let them know, okay? Thank you very much for watching. Um, there we go. That's it, dude. Oh, a good video. Nice.